gotta we gotta solve all those crimes at one time. So the Earth is an active crime scene, people. The Earth is an active crime scene. What do we mean by this? You've seen CSI before. You've seen any of the CSI shows or the crime scene investigation. You know when they say, um, "Hey, what you doing here?" This is my shop, this is my store, my building, my home, or whatever like that. Or I, I need to get about my business, you know, and the people who live there or are around there or own the property where the crime took place, they want to go about their usual activity. And the crime scene investigators and the police and everything tell them that, no, you can't. We have jurisdiction here because this is an active crime scene. So what I'm stating to you, my brothers and sisters, is that the earth is an active crime scene. What does this mean? What does this mean to us? First of all, when we talk about the Bible and we speak about, you know, the good news and we, we speak about the teachings of the Imperial Majesty, some of y'all may have some um, unrealistic ideas, you know, of what this is really about. Like the first generation of Rastas and Rastafari, they had certain ideas and those who went to Ethiopia thinking that the world and everything would end around the 1970s. You know, if you was back there, you might have thought the same thing. So they went to Ethiopia, thought about themselves, divided the land, so forth and so on. And we're still here trying to connect and put the pieces together and doing a lot of studies and finding out about information and facts that were suppressed and not told and not passed on to us. So we're not really up to speed as we should be because of that. Much like when his Imperial Majesty had stated, he had stated that, um, he stated that where are we to turn for answers to the questions, you understand, that have never been asked before. You understand and how our education and environment has ill prepared us. You understand? We're not really prepared for this new age and this new day. But by the grace of his imperial majesty in Christ, we are becoming prepared and we will be prepared, you understand, for this new day and this new age. But the first thing we must deal with is judgment. Judgment. Refer to the other video that we had did a little bit earlier where we talked about how a lot of Rastas, the peace and love Rastafari versus what the Bible and what the teaching of the Imperial Majesty actually teach us, that this is a time of judgment. You understand that there is no peace to the wicked. So the key word, first of all, that we need to search is the word search and seek within the Standard King James Schofield Study Bibles. So this is, note this, this is your homework right here. To look up the word search and seek. To understand the importance of that key, that biblical key word, search and seek. Now, the upgrade of this, in this present day and time, is investigate. The word search, when Christ says to search it out, seek it out, investigate it. Do a diligent you understand? Study of it. Study to show yourself approved to God as a workman. A workman, that means we have a specified work. You understand? We have a task to accomplish. What is the true task of the anointed Rastafari? What is the true task of the elect of God in this time? What is investigation and what does the scriptures Tell us. Now, this is the biblical key word. The biblical key word is search. Is search or, or seek it out. You understand? You'll find this in the Bible under search and seek. The key words search and seek. Now, the upgrade to this is investigate, investigation, gathering intelligence, gathering evidence, making the case for the kingdom of the King of Kings, for the day of judgment. When, according to the book of Ye Johannes Rai, when the books will be open and all will be judged out of the books. You understand? Who, who writes the books? Who gathers this? We're told that, well, it's the angels. You know, people say, well, the angels are going to do that. Don't, don't you worry about it. The angels are going to gather that. But according to the Itachiensis Christos, you understand that we will be as the angels, that his true followers, 
You understand? Those elect with his new name will be as his angels and would carry this message, the message of salvation. But at the same time, for those who reject the message of salvation, it is judgment. It is condemnation. You understand? They will not be acquitted. You understand? They will be condemned on the day of judgment. Because judgment means just that. That we're going to judge. It's going to it's gonna weigh. Things are going to be weighed and balanced. You understand? You've often heard it said by those of old Christian dumb. You understand? Thou should not judge. Don't judge. And what will be and what you measure to somebody else will be measured to you. You understand? But you've also should have heard when Gaetatius Christo says, judge righteously. Do not judge by appearances. Therefore, we must investigate and we must get to the core curriculum, the, the root, the foundation of this. This is where the Bible says to us to study, to show ourselves approved. You understand? As ministers of the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. So the first verse that we'd like to begin this off with is Proverbs Metafe Misale Mitraf Haya Mister Kulet where it says it is the glory of God to conceal conceal a thing but the honor of kings is to search out a matter but it's the honor of kings to search out a matter we are the kingdom priests or the priests of the kingdom according to the word according to Johannes Rai Mi'raf An the Revelation chapter 1 here it clearly says and from Jesus Christos verse 5 who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth or more correctly according to the metaf kedus of negus and the guest not the prince of the kings of the earth literally but the governor of the kings of the land the governor of the kings of the earth to him that loved us that love i and i and i and washed us that washed i and i and i from our I and I and I sins in his own blood, blood being a metaphor for life, you understand, therefore his living example according to the teachings of his imperial majesty, verse 6, and hath made us I and I and I kings and priests or a kingdom of the priesthood according to the Metzav Kedus to God and his father to his God Father to God and his Father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen now in Christendom they tell us that well it's gonna happen one day at some time but really the, the truth of the matter is that in every age you understand after the manifestation of the good news it could have happened you understand? But according to the prophecy, the Almighty knew that it would be a certain set time. This is where Revelation, as we study Revelation, we'll see how the seven ages of humanity, you understand, as well as the ages since the time of Christ, were prophesied, the seals opening up and the different, the different dispensations, you understand, of time up until 1892 and the birth of Lij Teferi. You understand the Moshia, the Christ, you understand, of this present age. Now, let's just return to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2, Bamarinya. You understand, in the Amharic for a moment. And let's see what the King of Kings, Metaf Kedu, says about this very important point. It says, Bismaab, or Wolu Women Fiskadu Sahadu Amlak. It says in Metaf and Misale, Mi'raf, Haya, Amis, the Kutir Hulet. In the Milo, Ye Egezi Avi Herra Kubura Negarina Mesawerno Ye Negestata Kubura Gina Negarina Mamera Merno Negarin Mamera Merno. In other words, to search out the matter, to investigate the matter. 
it is the glory of God. Now, what does the King of Kings teach us? The King of Kings teach us that, for my part, I glory in the Bible. This is the, the teaching of the King of Kings. We have the evidence. We have the proof. This is the fact. This is truth. This is the fact. This is the reality. The King of Kings, Haile Selassie I, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, Kedusa, Batachin says, For my part, I glory, I glory in the Metzhaf Kedus. I glory in the Bible. So what does the word teach us here in Metzhaf in Nisale? Chapter 25, verse 2, it says, The glory of God is to hide or conceal a thing. And then it says, The glory or the honor of kings, but the glory and honor of kings, but the glory and the honor of kings, which kings are we speaking about now? We're speaking about the true king. We're speaking about Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. And he hath made us kings and priests to God and his father. To him be glory, the kabur, and dominion, the gizad, forever and ever. Amen. And now when, when was this book written? Around 96 or so AD, Revelation, Johannes Rai. So from that time, you understand, the access was there. You understand, but the faith, the true admittance and practice of the word, it would take ages, you understand, to incubate even Ethiopia, you understand, to give birth to such a man-child, to that prophetic man-child. In other words, God had to prepare a place, a space. In Revelation chapter 12, when speaking of the Son of Man, Lich Teferi prophecy in the scripture, it shows how the woman went into the wilderness for times and times and dividing of time, you understand, until that preparation, that woman symbolic for Ethiopia and the true Christiano, the true Ibrawian, the true Hebrews, Ethiopian Hebrew Christians, you understand, to incubate, create a space, to incubate a holy space so that that man child so that such a chosen child Lich Teferi could be born you understand now with the manifestation the revelation of Ras Teferi and the prophecy unfolding you understand we have to see what role and what responsibility that we have in the kingdom and that is to make the case for the kingdom you understand to bring forth the evidence for the judgment but as we said earlier, the first thing that we we have to do, you understand? Mm. The first thing that we have to do, you understand, is to make sure that we clear ourselves. You understand that we have immunity before the kingdom. This is not to say, oh, let's judge Babylon. Babylon, you know, Babylon for dead. Babylon, fire, hot to fire, bun, and we still are walking around in our sins with with no sort of so no sort of immunity. You see what the Moshiach's salvation for Israel, and this is very key. Cause a lot of people are confused about this, because according to the scriptures, according to the scriptures, I hope you can go at this lively pace that we are going now in the scriptures. Let's go to Luke for a moment. Luke chapter. Let's, let's see, Luke chapter, we're going to touch on the Magnificat, you understand, the Magnificat, um, that's speaking of Maria, you understand, but according to Christ, according to what's said of Christ, what says according, for Christ right here, it says, uh, he hath, he hath, he hath put down, the put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. Who can be of lower degrees than the descendants of the slaves of the Western Hemisphere, the lost sheep of the house of Israel? We as black men, you know, we as black people, you understand, the lost sheep of the Beit of Israel of the lowest degrees. You understand? He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degrees. He hath Filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath hoped in 
his servant Israel. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his Zar, his Zara, his seed forever. Now that is Luke chapter 1. We read uh, verse uh, 52 to verse 55. But the birth of Jesus Christos was on which wise? In, in other words, in what way? You understand? And for what purpose? People will tell you, well, Christ came to save everybody in the world. While Christ says of himself that he came only to the lost sheep of the Beit of Israel. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. And even when it was announced that this holy child would be born in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 1. It says, and she... Speaking of distant Gamariam, the black virgin Mary, Hebrew, Ethiopian Hebrew virgin of the tribe of Judah, Yehuda, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shall call his name Yehoshua, or the Targum Yesus, for he shall save his people. What? Who is his people? Did he say he shall save Roman people or Gentile people? No, it says he shall save wh whose people? His people from what? Their sins, from their shortcomings. You understand? From their missing the mark, missing the intention of Kedus Abatachin. So we have to ask ourselves, you understand, what is the intention or what was the intention of Kedus Abatachin, of our Father, concerning us that we fell short of? What was his intention? His intention was that we would be a kingdom of the priesthood. That was his very intention. Now, we can go to Old Testament first, but let's go to New Testament. And our brother, Hawaria Petros, gives us a very concise and clear explanation and evidence of this in his epistle. Give us a moment. Let's bring this up where it says what sort of generation you understand what sort of people we're supposed to be you understand we're going to touch on this earth being an active crime scene you understand but we have to give you a little background to it you understand the groundation this is just a groundation so that when we get into the real ground you understand and ones and ones sometimes you know act like they don't know or they haven't been informed you understand that there would be no excuse Right here, do we have it right here? We are a holy generation. You understand? Okay, give me one moment. Some parts are being highlighted here. But people think we're just gathering this evidence, you know, just to talk about. You know, there's some fools out there that think that we're just preaching the gospel just to preach about it, just to have something to talk about. You understand that when we prove that that white Christendom, you understand, whitewashed Christianity is false, it's a lie, it's a corruption. We just we're just there just because we're angry with white people, you understand, and just to have something to say. When we talk about Christ being black, they think we're just saying that because, you know, we want to feel good about ourselves. No, we want to know the truth. You understand? We want to know the truth. That's why we are saying these things and proving these things. Those who speak against this good news, make them bring forth their proof. You understand? They may say that we were fraudulent and this is not true and, and you would, would not, you know, speak in the Bible correctly. And really, it's not about that. It's about their whitewashing of Christianity and everything. But make them bring forth their evidence. I haven't seen all these people who be, who be saying all these strange things about our ministry and everything like that. I haven't seen no evidence. You understand? We're still waiting for their evidence. You understand? We're waiting to see their evidence. But we have not seen any evidence because they don't have no evidence all they can say is that well we're not saying the right thing we're not saying the white thing but what they mean to say is that we're not saying the white thing you understand but we are saying the right thing because we were saying the wrong thing and they had some evidence they would throw it in our face 
but because they don't have any evidence, they therefore can't throw it in our face. Let's just begin from the beginning right here. Let's begin from the beginning. Now, this particular testimony uh, of Peter, the first epistle, general epistle of Peter, the, the active subject matter is the election. The election. Now, I know a lot of y'all got so deep into uh, Obama and Obama's nation, the Obama nation and stuff like that, that most of y'all think when you hear election, that's the first thing that your mind is basically running on. But the summary of election is this. In both Testament, both the Hebrew and the Coptic, the Greek, you understand? The words are rendered elect, election, choose, chosen. And there's a link with Kherui, you understand? Or Kheru, or Horus, or not the or Horus of ancient Egypt, but the real Horus, right? In all cases, they mean simply chosen or to choose and are used of both human and divine choices. Firstly, the latter use election is a corporate. It's a corporate election of the nation of Israel, or what we say as the Beta Israel, or we as Ethiopian Hebrew. So we as Ethiopian Hebrew have a corporate election which also relates to the church. Um, references Isaiah, Isaiah uh, 45 and 4, Ephesians 1 and 4. And it's also individual. It also relates to individual election as First Peter uh, chapter 1 verse 2 says that we are elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and through the sanctification of the manifest, the spirit, to obedience. You see that key word right there? To what? It didn't say to love and, and, and one love and all. No, to obedience. And the sprinkling of the blood. You understand? Blood being the metaphor for life. You can go to Genesis chapter 9 with Noah, where it speaks about the blood is the life. You understand? That explains the metaphor, the use of that word. Don't be confused like the disciples were about the leaven and don't eat because they think they said the wear of bread. He said the wear of the leaven of the Pharisee. So when it says the blood of Jesus Christos, we're not talking cannibalism or some nonsense like that. We're speaking about the metaphor to those who are initiating it. They understand the blood of Jesus Christos means the life of Jesus Christos. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. So this is the individual level. Now secondly, election Election is according to the foreknowledge of Ha Elohim. The election is according to his foreknowledge. That means knowing something beforehand. Not just prophesizing. Prophesizing is when you proclaim the foreknowledge. You see, when foreknowledge becomes prophecy is when one proclaims that. But having that foreknowledge, that belongs to Ha Elohim. That belongs to our God Father. According to First. Peter 1 and 2, the very same verse. And holy of grace is completely of grace and it's apart from human merit. So none of us have the election of Ras Teferi, you understand? By virtue of human merit. You understand? Because I can speak in Haric or translate. That's not why my election of Ras Teferi is, it's because of the foreknowledge of of Keramawi Haila Selassis because the foreknowledge of Getachin Jesus Christos and it's completely a matter of Sega, you understand? Completely a matter of grace and it's not according to Shara or Sera according to works or human merit. Romans chapter 9 verse 11 as well as Romans chapter 11 verse 5 and 6 will clarify you scripturally on that. Thirdly, Election proceeds from the divine volition. In other words, election, it proceeds from the divine will. Volition means will. Make a note of that. Volition means will. So it's based on the divine will or the will of God in Christ. John chapter 15, verse 16. So election is silesi or ergo or therefore. One is the sovereign act of Ha Elohim. It's the sovereign act of Kedus Abatachin in Tsega, Betsega in grace, whereby certain individuals and certain ones are 
chosen become the Khruyan from among mankind, from among humanity, Yeso Lijoch for Rasu, for himself, according to John chapter 15, verse 19. Let's, let's go over that one more time. The election is one, the sovereign act of God. In other words, what does sovereign mean? Sovereign means self-ruling. You understand? Self-ruling. You understand? Almost, he does what he wants to do. You understand? Why did God do that? Because he wanted to do that. Why did our father do it? Because he wanted to do that. Daddy does what daddy pleases. You understand? Know because he is sovereign. So it's by the sovereign act of God. Because a lot of these Luciferians and Satanists and others would be like, well, if God know everything, then why do we have to still worry about doing good and evil and everything? Because we, almost like they don't have no choice in the matter. They do have a choice. And the Almighty has a choice in the matter. So through his sovereign act in grace, he has chosen certain individuals from among mankind for himself. This is what we say when we say the true Rastafari. You understand? Know this is what we mean by that. You understand? Know when we say the true Rastafari. You understand? Know Those who are chosen for himself. Those who have received his new name. And therefore, those who are elect. You understand? Know according to his sovereign act. And that is according to his grace. You understand? Know through the Atachin Yesus Christos. Thus, the importance, so let's see, the importance of the Atachin Yesus Christos and the testimony of the Atachin Yesus Christos according to the teachings of his Imperial Majesty and according to the reality and the fact of the Metaf Kedus, the Holy Scriptures. Secondly, the sovereign act of Ha Elohim, of Hashem Kedamawi Haila Selassie, whereby certain elect persons, certain ones who are elect according to his sovereign will, are chosen for distinctive service for him. They have a particular mission, they have a particular distinct service, you understand, for the King of Kings in Christ and according to his Christ. According to Luke chapter 6 verse 13, Acts chapter 9 verse 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 and 28 now as we continue on this particular theme you understand let us continue in this theme because we're in first epistle general of petros you understand of peter where it says blessed be god and father of the attaching Jesus christus of our lord jesus christ this is the order Bless be Kedamawi Hala Salasi Kedus Abatachin of Getachin Yesus Christos. So, from the scriptures, we learn our salutation, we learn our greetings, we learn the proper order of things. Because sometimes when we speak to some of the, you know, Rastas and, 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 you know, some of our brothers and sisters, and one will say, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll say every title that they think they know in English and in Hark and Iyerik of the King of Kings, and we go through this big, long kind of greeting, just highly I, the first, highly the last, the almighty, this and that, and the next thing, and so forth. But it, there's no order. It's out of order. It's out of order. You know, in the court, the first thing we say, order in the court, order in the court. So in the courts of the King of Kings, where his name has been sanctified and proclaimed, you understand? In the square or the cipher, there must be order in his courts. And we learn this order through the study and the application, the practice of the scriptures. But we must study it first so we know what we're practicing, so we will perfect it. Blessed be God, the God and Father, of our Lord, Jesus Christos, which, according to his abundant mehiret, mercy, hath begotten us wait 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 wait. what, what did he do for us he begotten us he, he, he begotten what is begotten he gave birth to us you understand we are born you understand again so therefore there is the prerequisite of the new birth there is the prerequisite you understand of being born again from above but before one can be born again one has to repent you understand one has to repent one has to have a change of mind so this is a very conscious, you, you don't stumble into Rastafari, you understand? If you stumbled into it, you understand, and it really means something to you, study and show yourself approved 
to God produce Abba Tanchin as a workman that need not to be ashamed. So he begot us again, again. We were born again. You understand? We've been born again according to the scripture right here, First Peter chapter one, verse three. To a lively hope. I like that word that they have right there. What kind of hope is it? It's a lively or a living hope. A living hope. You see, some people have dead hope. So the Bible is telling us that there's hope, but there's all kind of hope out there. There's Bob hope out there. Cry a bun. You understand? We don't have no business with Bob hope. You understand? There's all kind of hope. There's dead hope out there. But we have been begotten again to a living tesfa. Like when Barana Selassie, a.k.a. Bob Marley, said, I and I is a living sacrifice, according to um, the scriptures. I think it's Romans chapter chapter 12, where it speaks about that, a living sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>